Hi, and welcome back. In today's episode, we'll be talking about variables and types. Now, in the last episode, we um, managed to use our first C sharp statement, which was console.writeLine, and we got it to output some text. And we also learned about using comments. Now, in this um, installation, I'm going to ask you to delete what's in our main function. So we're going to be talking about a we're going to be talking about variables and types of variables. So uh, I'm going to get up a sticky note. Yeah. So let's use this sticky note to just talk about different types of variables. Now, if you are coming from a math background or you have done maths at in your schooling or college studies, then you may have come across variables, right? And for example, we can have x equals y plus z. And if we're talking about math, then we can say, let's, let's say that y is one and z is three then we know that x equals 4. But programming and C sharp doesn't work that way necessarily. So when we say x is equal to something, let's say 4, what we're in fact doing is taking that value of 4 and assigning it to our variable x, right? So once we've done that statement, and I'm going to put that semicolon behind that so we end up that statement, once we've done that, um, we are now saying that the value of x is 4. So there are different types of variables. Variables are great ways to store a value without using that value over and over and over. Like if you were using a math equation and you, let's say, You had 45 plus 61, and then later on you said 45 plus 72, and later you had 45 plus 81. It would be so much easier to instead give a value to a variable like x, and then that way you could easily just use that variable in the statement. And also, if you wanted to change the value of that variable, whenever you changed it to 40, for example, all of these instances of that variable would be changed to that 40, or the number that you've assigned to it. Now, the different types of variables that we're going to look at is, our, let's look at our first one. And that's our int variable. Now, int stands for integer, and integers are whole numbers, so 0, 10, 15, 20. We can also have, for example, float, right? And floats are also numbers, but when we want to be a little bit more precise, we can use a float. Let's say we want a number like 30.45. So we have that floating decimal point. That's when we use a float. If we want to be a little bit more precise and we want to be able to use those exact numbers, we can use a float. The next type of variable we'll be looking at is a string. And a string is a string of characters, right? So in fact, let's, let's, um, let's before we get to that, let's introduce you to the character. So a character is a single, well, character. And it could be anything from just A or B or T, but it would be only one single character, right? You can have T, Y, P, E as a character because there are more than one, there's more than one character in that string. So you could only have one character in a char variable. 
Now with a string, you could have a string of characters. You could have the word type or hello or Peter. And sorry, sorry, it's all Peters. Um, yeah, so you could have a string of characters and that way you could store that entire string of characters inside that string variable. Now, the last type of variable that I want to look at is something that you're going to find often in programming, and it kind of helps you to use certain logic for programming. And if you think of a light switch, when you, when you walk over to your bedroom light and you turn on the switch, it can be in one of two positions, true or on, so that your, your light is on, it's true, or off, or false, right? So and that type of variable is a bool or boolean, right? And it can either be true or false, right? Just like your light switch, it can either be on or off. But in this case, we'll be using true and false, right? So when you're when you're saying, um, for example, if you have a boolean variable variable that you want to uh, say is true, you can say mm, bool light on is equal to true. Now, there are two things that I want you to look at, and that's the, the fact that when I'm creating this variable name, the first letter of our variable is a small uh, or lower cap, lowercase letter, and the second word I've got in the uppercase letter, and that, that's just a good way to name your variables so that they, they make sense, and that's just a good naming convention. So let's look at a few examples of int. Let's start at the top again and use a few examples of int. And so let's just say I, I want to I wanna give a variable called x a, a number of 45. So int x is equal to 45. And now every time I use the number or the variable x, the computer on the program will know that that value is set to 45. Okay, um, now we could do the same for a float. Float y is equal to, and remember floats are used for instances where we need to be a little bit more precise and we want to be able to have a decimal point. And you can have, for example, 30.45. 30 and at the end of your variable, just to let the computer know that it is a float, you have a little f, right? You can finish that off, right? Um, you can do the same. Let's create a string. So string greeting, ooh, greeting, greeting is equal to, and when you're creating a string, it's important to put that string in quotation marks. So Let's put quotation and hello. So now every time I call up the word or the, the string, the variable greeting, it's going to know that I want to say hello. Now, I could do this for the bool variable as well, which I've done, right? And let's head back to Visual Studio so we can kind of implement what we've just learned. So I have say int x is equal to 45, right? Let's put that to x amount, or uh, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Let's leave that as x. Int x equal to 45, and int y is equal to 90, right? Now, in the last episode, we learned about outputting a message to our program and to our console, sorry. And we use the statement console.writeLine. And previously, we 
use text. So we could put this statement, hello world, and it would print out the statement, hello world. But we can also use console.writeLine to print values. So let's have a value of x, OK? And I'm going to click debug, start without debugging. And now you can see, sorry, let me just drag that over. You can see that the value of x, which we assigned, oopsie, yeah, the value of x that we assigned of 45 is now showing up in our console window because we said console right line value of x. Okay, now we can do that for y as well, and I'll show you. It will show the value of y. And there we go. It shows the value of y. Now, we can also use this to do some calculations. And, and let's let's see. OK, let's have a value of z. z is equal to, oopsie, whoops. z looks like I cannot use that. I forgot. OK, OK. This z. Oops. OK, there we go. Let's just click off of that. Every time I use the space bar, it thinks I'm selecting that uh, the first statement that pops up there. So z is equal to x plus y. OK, and now we're going to use z in our, oh, sorry, this is the, call that int. Right, and we're going to output the value of z to our console.write line. So let's see what happens. Great stuff. And now you can see 135, that's the value of z. So now what you may have noticed is that we, we can also use certain math operators that you're used to already. We can use plus. Let's let's add um, minus. Okay. We can use minus or subtract. Right there we go. We can use divide. We can use multiply, and for that we will use the asterisk. So when we use the asterisk, that's multiply. Right. There we go. You can see value of 4050. OK. And there's also one more, one more, and that's the modulus operator. Now, what the modulus will do is it will divide and give you the remainder of that division. So let's, let's um, put y modulus x. OK. And you'll see that that's 0 because 90 divided by 45 gives you 2. But there's nothing remaining. There's nothing left over. So let's just change the value of x or to y to 91. And you'll see what happens. Right. There you can see 1 because 91 divided by 45 leaves us with a remainder of 1. OK. So it, you can also do this. So let's use the function that we uh, learned in the last episode and comment out that. Let's comment that out as well so we can use it another time. Now, we also talked about strings. And so let's say string greeting is equal to hello. And remember to end off your statement with a semicolon. And let's put greeting, var variable greeting, in our console.writeLine. Now, if I click debug, start without debugging, 
you'll see that it printed the word hello, because that's what the variable greeting contains. OK, now we can also do a little bit of math operations with strings. I wouldn't say math, we'll come combining strings, right? We could say string world is equal to world, right? And we can then put, let's have it as greeting plus world, right? And when you do this, you run debug, and you'll see it says, hello world. But there's, there's no space in between hello and world. And that's because none, there were no spaces in any of our strings. If you'd like, you can add a little space between hello to accommodate for that space. Or you could even say, you can even add that space in between. That way, you'll get hello space world. Now, another handy thing that I wanted to show you, but I, I forgot to do so in the last episode, was that if you type CW and press tab twice, it just quickly prints or gives you a console.write line statement. Now, Visual Studio has a lot of these shortcuts and that's just a really fun one so you just type cw and tab twice and that way you can quickly code console.write line without having to type out the entire statement okay so now you've learned about variables you've learned about different types of variables and we've even gone into a little bit of operator use and how to add variables together. In the next episode, I'm going to give you a little bit of a challenge and I hope you're ready for it.